Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part 6. Working on a 5 inch gauge steam locomotive, cleaning up and painting the axle pump and adjusting the valve rod gland. In the last episode, during the painting of the axles, I explained what this part is in the centre of the axle. And the purpose of this eccentric sheave in the middle of the axle is to drive this. The axle pump, looking a little bit sorry for itself. So first of all, I'm going to dismantle this and clean it up and show you how it works. This is quite an unusual type of axle pump, because this is a very short engine from front to rear. The axle pump is not the normal type. This uses a forked yoke and a cross pin through the ram to move the ram back and forth in the cylinder. And by using this design, it allows for the axle pump to be much shorter, so the entire axle pump assembly can fit much closer to the eccentric sheave on the axle. What I'm doing at the moment, and frankly I'm struggling, I'm removing the split pins from the cross holes in the pin that goes through the pump ram. The cross pin and the holes where the split pins fit are very rusty, as indeed are the split pins. So I'm rotating the split pins back and forth and very, very slowly they're coming out of the cross pin. I'm being quite careful and taking my time because I don't want to shear them off and have to drill them out. The first one's come out all right, so it's time to do the other side. If you analyse why this pump has been made this way, you will see that if it wasn't made this way and it was just a standard pump fitted in such a confined space, the eccentric rod would have to be far too short. And this would put side pressure on the pump ram and premature wear would occur. I've worked on quite a few Stuart 5A stationary engines over the years and these use a crankshaft driven pump with a very short eccentric rod and the main pump ram is normally worn just on one side and the side of the ram that gets worn is very relative to the direction of rotation of the crankshaft. Ah, the second pin's come out. Before I paint this pump I'm taking off this union and you can clearly see the stainless steel ball in the valve chamber. I remove this and put it in a safe place for later. The rusty cross pin was very tight in the ram, but I managed to tap it out very carefully with a hammer, and in this clip I'm starting the process of cleaning up the metal parts before painting. It's no good just using ordinary car paint, you need to use etch primer on these parts. Etch primer is a type of paint that contains an acid that etches into the metal. I'm not going to spray these parts, what I'm doing is using the cap off the etch primer, and I'm spraying some etch primer into the cap, and I'm going to use a paintbrush to paint it on these small parts. And why am I doing this? Well, basically it's quicker. You can get plenty of paint on the parts and you don't have to waste time masking up the eccentric strap. It's an either or situation really. I could have masked up the eccentric strap and sprayed the part, but I like to use a paintbrush sometimes. This is the other part that's getting a coat of etch primer. This is the body and it's made from gunmetal. The edge primer is cellulose based so it dries pretty quickly and once it was dry I went straight into the other part painting it with the red Humbrol enamel. This is Humbrol Gloss Red number 19. By which time the paint had dried on the main body of the pump. So now I can also treat that to a coat of Humbrol number 19 as well. As far as I can see it and please bear in mind I'm not a professional painter but when I paint things I can manage to get quite a lot of paint on the items without any runs or drips. But the amount of paint applied to the component is critical. Even though this clip is speeded up to double speed, you can see that I'm carefully working the paint into every nook and cranny on the part and spreading it very evenly, not just leaving great big globules of paint on the part. And if you do that, nothing can run. And by painting this way, you get a surprisingly even coat of paint all over the part. This part hanging from the shelf, freshly painted with etch primer, is the draw hook and chain. I decided not to paint this part with etch primer by hand because that would be far too tedious, so I sprayed it instead. Painting can be a tedious and time consuming job, but compared to this, painting is a breeze. In this clip, I'm tightening one of the valve glands that screws into the steam chest on one of the cylinders. As soon as I removed the running boards when I originally dismantled the engine, I noticed that one of these gland nuts was completely free to slide up and down the valve rod without actually doing its job as a gland nut. And for those of you who are not familiar with gland nuts and glands and things like that, it's the way that you stop steam leaking out of the steam chest down the valve rod. A valve rod or piston rod goes through a gland, and what's normally inside a gland is either an o-ring on modern engines or graphite yarn on older ones and the gland nut compresses the graphited yarn against the valve spindle or valve rod or piston rod and stops the steam from leaking out. 
this part of the video is condensed. This took ages. I would think it took me possibly three quarters of an hour to do this using two Allen keys of different sizes. These Allen keys in turn fit in the small holes in the gland nut and very slowly you can rotate it into the position you need it to be. This seems to me to be a very strange design. The part of the steam chest that I painted with etch primer is a casting that's been machined. And I think this is designed to look like a valve guide which is commonly found on steam locomotives. But in this case it's non-functional, it's just a nice shape on the steam chest. The slot in it allows me to do this, but it takes ages. It really does take a long time. Oh no, the voices have started again. And now I'm going to have to take my medication and go and lie in a dark room for several hours. But before I do that, I'll just finish the painting on the end of the cylinder, including painting the etch primer casting that is stopping me from adjusting the gland nut properly. This is a view from underneath, so you can imagine that when the running boards are on, adjusting this from underneath using the same principle of the two Allen keys would be quite difficult. When I look around me in the steam workshop at the other locomotives, this is nothing. This is simple by comparison. Some of the other ones are detailed to the nth degree. Some of them should be classified as works of art. That's it for this video. I'll just leave you with this shot of the paint drying. It's a team effort at the steam workshop, so I won't be doing everything on this engine. The next thing I'll be doing with it is reassembling it and making it go. The rest of the painting will be done by one of the other members of the team. Well, thankfully the medication's working, the voices have stopped, and I'm feeling much better now. And so am I. Me too. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.